Victory in the Amish farmer case would be a touchdown for food freedom, but it is not our line of defense and it is not the entire game. In this video, I am going to give you a recap of the Amos Miller case, as well as a bit of a time frame as to when we can expect a verdict for Amos Miller, whether good or bad. I'm going to give you clear-cut actions that you can take today, whether farmer or concerned citizen, to move forward in defense of your right to access traditional foods directly from a farm. And number three, I'm actually going to leave you with a football food freedom analogy that may sound funny, but to be honest, I think it will give you some perspective as to the weight that your specific place in this game holds. So after being raided by the state on January 4th and sued by the state on January 24th, Amos Miller appeared in court on behalf of Miller Organic Farms. The hearing took place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where 200 to 400 concerned citizens, small farmers, and even members of the Amish community turned out. After the four-hour hearing, unfortunately, Judge Thomas B. Spinagle ruled in favor of the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, which means at present Amos Miller cannot sell any of his raw dairy products to his private members. Now, this ruling was issued on the premise that Amos Miller is operating without a Pennsylvania raw dairy permit, which is true. However, the counter argument is this. Number one, obtaining a permit would restrict Miller from offering the dozens of products that his customers want, such as soft cheeses, kefir, colostrum, butter, sour cream, etc., to just three state-approved products, liquid milk, hard cheese aged for 60 plus days, and yogurt. Second counter argument, and probably a little bit more important, is that Amos Miller's customer base is made up of only private members. Private members who have contractually agreed with Amos Miller Organic Farms directly to assume all liability for the food products they purchase from them in exchange for the ability simply to purchase direct from that farmer. So now Miller proceeds to formal trial, where Robert Barnes hopes to have a verdict for Amos Miller within two to three years. So here are some clear-cut actions that you can take in the interim, and these solutions are going to be so simple. For the concerned citizens, simply find your local farmer and begin to buy from them. I have linked three online directories that will connect you to your local farmer, two of my favorites being eatwild.com and rawmilk.com. You do not have to purchase all of your groceries from a local farmer, but I challenge you to replace one item on your grocery list with a local source within the next eight weeks. Farmers markets also being an amazing way to connect to your local food producing community. Just be sure to ask the vendor, did you grow this? If you have access to the land, it is my strong recommendation that you use that land to grow some type of food source. Start small, be willing to fail, but keep at it. For me personally, after watching the US food supply chain collapse during the pandemic, I went from a desk job and being voted the very least likely to farm among my family and my friends to raising beef and lamb on pasture. I say that to encourage you because if someone like me can go from knowing nothing about animals or raising them for food to being someone who raises animals on the land for a living, you can do it too. I do have two free resources, one that's gonna help you raise grass-fed beef and one that will help you raise grass-fed lamb. As an absolute beginner, I will send these to you for free when you click the first link in the description of this video. So now for the analogy, let's imagine this battle over food freedom is like a game of football. There are two teams and on one side, you have the small farmers, the homesteaders and the concerned citizens. And on the opposing team, you have big box food companies and their lobbyists pharmaceutical companies, as well as government regulators. Both teams have the same objective, and that is to get the ball to the end zone to score points towards their various goals. As advocates for food freedom, we want regulatory exemptions for farm-to-consumer transactions under informed consent. Big box lobbyists and government regulators want more red tape. Red tape that will make it harder for that farm to access consumers and vice versa. The offensive and defensive lines for food freedom are are being maintained by the small farm, the homesteader, and the conscious consumer who is supporting them. And we have a few politicians left acting as receivers to catch the ball and run it down the field whenever they can. I'm still trying to figure out who the quarterback for Team Food Freedom will be. If you've got suggestions in the comment section, please leave them for me. But to bring it all full circle here, victory in the Amish farmer case would be a touchdown for food freedom. But it is not our line of defense. And it is not the entire game. 
It's just another play, and there are a lot of opportunities to move the ball down the field before the game ends. And the thing that gives me the most hope in the context of the food freedom battle is this. The defense for food freedom is growing exponentially as a groundswell of millions of farmers and millions of consumers is rising by ultimately and simply just consuming local food or growing that food themselves. And that is going to be the most powerful thing, strengthening the liberties that remain and being ready to mobilize when opportunity for the expansion of those liberties arises. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna do what I've been doing for the last four years. I'm gonna raise my sheep, I'm gonna grow my beef, and I am going to be ready to catch that ball and run it down the field as soon as the next play is called and I trust that several of you will be on the team with me. If you're new to the Amish Farmer case, click the playlist on screen now to catch up on all six previous videos.